In car audio, there are many times that we need to build custom speaker rings. Making these new custom speaker rings allows us to install speakers into a new location within the vehicle that will allow us to achieve better sound. I'm currently working on a project where I'm gonna be mounting speakers in the A pillar of this vehicle. Now you can use a material like wood to make speaker rings, but if we really want these rings to last a long time, we should consider using a material like acrylic. Acrylic is more dimensionally stable we can tap threads into it for fasteners, and heck, we can even light it up. But working with acrylic requires advanced fabrication techniques. How can we machine these speaker rings without using a CNC? And how can we make it so we have a nice flush mounted speaker? And what is this little notch in the corner for? That, my friends, is coming on up. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Mark. Welcome to my channel, Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and tutorials, and I do build log videos like this video. So if you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so you can be updated when I upload future videos. So just a quick heads up, this is actually going to be a two-part video because I'm actually gonna be making two slightly different speaker rings for these speakers. One is going to actually hold the speaker and the other is going to flush mount over it and hide the mounting hardware. I had to break this up into two videos because I wanted to make sure that I show you guys all the juicy details. So in this first part, we're gonna start with this base ring that the speaker flush mounts into. So of course, before we can get started, we need a plan. So let's open up our speakers here and pull them out. So the ring that I'm gonna be making is gonna be a little bit more complicated than just an outside diameter and an inside diameter. And that's because we're actually going to flush mount this down inside the ring, and then it's gonna have a separate ring that covers all of the fasteners. Because of that, there's gonna be a few more dimensions that we would have to take than normal. But we'll start with the easy ones. Let's imagine that this is a side view of the speaker. We're gonna get the overall diameter, and then we're also going to get the cutout diameter. So overall, about 3.47 and then the cut diameter about 2.90. Now I'm going to draw a cross section of half of the ring here that I kind of want it to fit down inside. It's going to be something like this. So we know that this dimension here is going to be the cutout for the cut dimension. So I'm going to call that 2.9375 which is 2 and 15 sixteenths. I know that the speaker here is going to mount to about right there and that's going to be about three and a half inches, but I want to give myself a little bit more. So to this dimension here will be 3.9375. I'm going to add an inch. So this step here is going to be a half inch on each side. Now, another dimension I want to take here is this thickness of the flange. That's a little less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to call this dimension here quarter of an inch. Now I know the dimensions of the rest of this stuff. I know that my thickness of my acrylic is going to be three quarters of an inch. I know that I want to make a one eighth by one eighth inch notch. And the reason for that is it will be a ring around the outside that we can attach material to. You'll see that later in the process. Sorry about my writing. It's a little sloppy, but we have a plan. We'll start with making the overall ring. It's going to have a four and a half inch overall diameter on this side, and then the inside cutout is gonna be two and 15 sixteenths. And guys, before you get excited and start cutting and making all sorts of dust, it's always a good idea to protect your speakers back up now that we have all the dimensions we need before the dust starts flying. All right, so here's my setup. What I've done is I've applied some random wood here. This is going to be my waste board. Basically, I can cut all the way through the MDF that I'm using into this wood without damaging my table. And then the reason we're actually starting with a piece of MDF is this is much easier to work with. And once I get my circle ring, I can transfer that to a piece of acrylic by using a flush trim router bit. So I've template taped both of these in position so they don't move. They're not going to slide around anywhere. And then the setup I've got going on here with my plunge router, which will actually plunge down into the workpiece. I've got this on it. This is the Mobile Solutions Perfect Circle, which allows us to adjust to any circle size using that as a center axis. And then this is going to cut. And then, uh, yeah, so let's lay out our cuts. I'm going to start with drawing a line from corner to corner on each side. And I do that to give myself a center of the wood. This wood is more than large enough for the ring. I like to go a little bit bigger than I need to intentionally so that I have a little bit more surface area to rest on with the router when I'm rotating around. Now I'm gonna use the edge of this to make it a square 
and I'm gonna draw some actual center lines. Now that I have these center lines, I can measure the radius out, and the radius is half of the diameter. So in the case of four and a half inches, we're going to go two and a quarter. You can mark those lines. And now half of two and 15 sixteenths is going to be one and 15 30 seconds. So the reason I made these lines is it will control where we're going to make our different cuts. And first we need to have an actual pivot point for our perfect circle to work upon. So what I'm gonna do is use this center punch, make a punch hole. That helps me to perfectly guide this drill bit that I'm gonna drill. So now the pin will fit in here perfectly. There we go. Now we always wanna start with making our outside cut first. So I'm gonna start with getting the bit down close to the work surface. I'm gonna lock my router in place. And now I can loosen the knob on the perfect circle so that I can adjust the diameter and bring it in. This is difficult to show on camera, but the router bit right here is actually on the outside of that line to save the inside since we're cutting around the outside. So now that we're in position, we wanna make sure that this knob is extra tight so that we don't move on our actual diameter. And now we're ready to cut. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on the router. I will then plunge down into the wood and I've set my depth adjustment on the plunge router. So I only go about halfway into the thickness of the wood making my first pass. Once I've made that first pass, I can then once again adjust the depth and this time I'm gonna go through the full thickness and I can make the second pass completing the final cut. And then repeat the same process, this time cutting on the inside of the line since we're cutting that inside diameter. Now we'll lift that out of the way. We can use a pry tool to actually get the ring out of here. You can see there's some of the template tape that we made sure we put on the back so that this would stay in position while we were cutting it. There we go, we have our ring. Now before we go any further here, we should do a little test fit. There we go, perfect. Fits like a glove. Now before we move on to the next step, I just wanna take a quick second to say a big thank you to our channel sponsor, Audio Control. When we're putting all this time and effort into custom fabricating different areas of the build in order to achieve the best sound, we also wanna make sure that we can control the sound in the best way possible. Audio Control has a complete lineup of products that allow us to do that, and one of the latest ones that they've released is their new D-4.800 amplifier. What's really unique about this amplifier is it has a digital signal processor built in, which means we can connect to it with a computer and we can control time alignment and equalization and crossovers. I recently did a review on this amplifier, so if you want to check that out, you can at the link here on screen. And if you want to learn more about them, you can check out audiocontrol.com where they're making good sound great. We know that the wooden speaker ring fits the speaker perfectly, so I'm gonna now transfer this shape to our three quarter inch piece of acrylic so that we can rough cut it using a jigsaw. We always wanna make sure that we cut out the inside first because it's easier to hold out here when we have more material. It would be really hard if we cut outside to hold this down while we're cutting it. We've got our acrylic ring, we've got our wooden ring. We also have some one inch template tape here. And there's one more thing that I really, really suggest if you're gonna be cutting acrylic is a router shield. Links to this and all the different specialized stuff that I'm using in this video are down in the video description. And guys, I just gotta tell you, cutting acrylic is no joke. If the router bit grabs this, it will grab it quickly. It will suck your hand into the bit. You do not mess around with this. Seriously, I've seen it happen to people I know. You do not mess around. You want a router shield. Trust me, it's like 60 bucks or something like that. It's way, way cheaper than a trip to the emergency room. To cut the acrylic, we're gonna be using this bad boy right here. This is a specialized bit made for cutting plastic material. You can see it's got two bearings, and this is a half inch bit, and since I'm cutting three quarter inch acrylic, we want a nice beefy bit to really get through this stuff without messing around. Load this in here. To make sure that we get a good secure hold to the top of this piece of acrylic, I am going to remove the protective paper at this point. The paper is still on the bottom though, so that while we're sliding around on your work surface, we can protect it. But in the end of the day, we're probably gonna end up sanding this piece and everything anyway. I'm not too worried about messing it up. Apply a bunch of template tape to this piece.
make sure you remove the tape. You don't want the tape to gum up your bit. Acrylic is now attached to the wood. We'll do another layer of tape here so that we can attach the router shield. Make sure we're really stuck on. And with that, our ring is now nice and perfectly circular. In fact, that bit does such a good job of cutting. It gives it actually a pretty nice finish. I mean, look, you can see my fingers through it, which normally for a router bit, this ends up being a little bit more of a dull finish. So honestly, if you did want to polish that, it wouldn't take much at all. But in the meantime, we're going to leave this stuck on and we're going to move on to the next step. So the first thing I know that I want to do is I want to make this little 1 8 by 1 8 inch notch around the outside perimeter here up on this top corner. And again, the reason I'm doing that is it will give me a spot to actually attach the material to once we are fiberglassing up to this in the custom A pillar location. So to do this, I need the 1 8 inch rabbiting bit from Mobile Solutions. You can see it's labeled on the tray here. It's going to cut into the material this direction, 1 8 of an inch and then we can control how far depth wise it cuts into the material just based on how far out of the router table we are. But in this case, we're also gonna be out of the router table about an eighth of an inch. To set our bit height, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of material here and I'm gonna slowly raise it until it catches slightly right there. So come back down. So that's like my zero location. And then I can use this dial here which one turn is a 16th of an inch. So that's 1 16th, 2 16th. So now we are an eighth of an inch up above. Let's make our cut. Now you can see this step right here. That's what we just cut. So we have that nice little notch. Now the next step is this half inch cut into the material a quarter inch down. So what I've done is I've loaded up this guy, this guy here from the outside of the blade here to the bearing, that is a half inch distance. And again, I can control the quarter inch by adjusting the height. Now, obviously this time we're removing a lot more material. So rather than cutting away that full quarter of an inch all at once, what I wanna do is I think I'm gonna make actually four different passes. I'm going to adjust this so that it's a 16th of an inch high, make a pass, adjust it up again so it'll be an eighth of an inch and so on until we get into the material a quarter of an inch. Boom, there we have it. Turned out really nice. You can see we've got that step that we talked about earlier for the outside for attaching the material. And then we also have our counter flush trimmed in. So let's do a little test fit of the speaker here. There we go. So now that we have our mounting ring, you guys are definitely gonna to wanna to check out the next part of this video series where I make this retaining ring that's going to fit over the speaker and hide the hardware. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can just take a quick second to smash that like button, it does help the videos. It helps me out so I can make more in the future. And hey, if you're new here, again, I would love to have you as a subscriber. By being subscribed, you'll be the first to know when I upload future videos and YouTube just added a new community tab where I can give you guys more details and information in between the videos for you to check out. Special thanks again to Audio Control along with John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, Truman, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon support team. You can check out details to that down in the video description, patreon.com slash caraudiofabrication. Thank you for watching.